and I believe we're live. Welcome. I'm Jessica Hentoff, Jessica the Circus Lady from Circus Harmony, and this is our weekly Up in the Air live stream, graciously hosted on City Museum's Facebook page. City Museum is the home of Circus Harmony. Our little glass ring is located on the third floor. At the moment, City Museum is open, and you've got to check out their Halloween Spectacular this weekend, and you can do that at citymuseum.org. And when you buy your tickets, don't forget to use the code GOHARMONY. Now, Circus Harmony, our circus ring is there, and we're doing some private classes and rehearsals, but we haven't yet opened up for regular classes. However, you get the scoop. We're going to be offering micro classes over Thanksgiving week, and you can register at circusharmony.org under classes. So grab a cup of coffee and we have a very special guest today that I'm going to introduce in a moment. You can see I'm drinking my coffee from the official Circus Harmony Defy Gravity mug because it is our Defy Gravity coffee. More on that later, but if you ordered yours last week, we just got it roasted. And if you didn't order yours last week, order it this week to get some really, really fresh coffee. But first, I want to give you a little hint about who our special guest is today. We call her the sensational Sabrina. She's phenomenally flexible. Uh, you might have seen her on the trapeze, on the lira, or in our last show on the aerial net. So I'm going to attempt to show you the aerial net act from our recent show, Fluente. Well, not so recent. It was last January. It was our undersea circus adventure, and Sabrina was queen of the mermaids. If you hear that screaming, that's Tico, my macaw. So for those of you who have been tuning in, you know that if I actually ever get all this technology right, it could be the end of the pandemic. So we'll see how we do, because right now, right now that's a Facebook page, but what we want to do Oh, apparently everything has magically disappeared that I already had lined up. I am so sorry. That means this is going to take a little while longer, but I'll tell you what you should do too. You should go to Circus Harmony's Facebook page, which I am not seemingly able to get to. So simply go to YouTube slash Circus Harmony. I swear I had all of these lined up earlier and they have disappeared. So if you go to YouTube, ah, and it says it can't be reached because I forgot to put the slash in. Well, clearly we are very far away from being the end of the pandemic, which will be foretold when none of my technology, when all of my technology works. And since it's not working, ah, sigh. So, here you go. Hopefully we are now at Circus Harmony's Facebook page. Fabulous. Uh, I'm going to the playlist for our show Fluente and I will show you hopefully, hopefully not that act, this act. Oh, me and my, here we go. Coming soon to a site. Well, that's you not it. Out in public. Nope. Sabrina, Queen of the Mermaids, is about to meet the captain of our submarine, Kayla. Except I don't know about your screen, it's frozen on my screen. Ah, technology. We are so far from the beginning of the end of the pandemic. Thank you. 
be very interesting when I try and get the next clip because that's even more complicated to get. But you just saw a little taste of Sabrina in the air on the aerial net from our Fluente show. At this moment, I would like to bring in to this live stream, the sensational Sabrina. Oh, I love it when technology works. And there she is, queen of the mermaids. Phenomenally flexible, the sensational Sabrina. So you're on mute. So if you could unmute. Thank you, and thanks for joining us. You're welcome. How you doing? Good, pretty good. And you're joining us from your home in? Jefferson County. <laughs> right? Yeah. A long ways from the City Museum. But before the pandemic, you were coming to City Museum how many days a week? Four or five. Which is a lot of driving. Uh, people just saw you in the Aerial Net Act. In a little while, if technology cooperates, I'm going to show them the other act you did with Jayla on the double lira, which is, um, you did it for the balancing act and you guys were also finalists in this season, St. Louis Teen Talent Competition. And people can see it on their site as well. But do you wanna list some of the other acts that you've been in as a performer with Circus Harmony besides Ariel Matt and double lira? That's a lot. Um, some of my favorite acts, it's definitely the acro act. Every acro act I've been in, whether it's like a regular Saturday acro act or a circus flora acro act. And people should know that acro is partner acrobatic. Oh, it's, yes. <laughs> we are shorthand for partner acrobatic. And you're a member of the St. Louis Arches, so it's a big acrobatic act with as yes. many as 14 or 15 young people flying through the air. Mm -hmm. and, and what else? Your favorite is partner acro. Yep. And in the past, my favorite contortion acts were the Tiger Contortion Act and the Accelerando Contortion Act. And I liked last year's Contortion Act because it was more of like a contortion acro type of contortion act. I don't know. I like all the acts I've been in, but I also do sling. I love my sling act. That's my favorite aerial apparatus. <laughs> and what else do I do? I've done group juggling. Juggling's not my favorite, but when I can do it, it's pretty, it's pretty good. <laughs> And you have done it on Rolling Globe. You did it as part of our TV show when we shot Wonderama, uh, the syndicated TV show. Yeah, you kind of do it, do it all. Uh, the Aerial Sling Act will be this year's St. Louis Teen Talent Act that you're going to audition with. So people can look forward to that. Ah, and if we're ever back in the ring, and you're kind of famous for a move that you do on trapeze with us, if people, Look, when I was promoting the show earlier today, uh, do you want to describe that trick? Do you have a name for it? This one? Oh, no, I don't have a name for it. <laughs> but um, try and explain it, and I'm going to see if I can pull it up on my phone if people can see it, because it's pretty quick. Try and describe it. Okay. Well, I don't know what the trick is called to get into it because it's technically a whole other trick where you cross the ropes behind the back and then you arch back. But then I somehow did that and <laughs> put my chin on the bar and I have no idea what the names are for the tricks, but it, it's not hard to get into. It's just, you oh, have to no, be- Anybody can just <laughs> bend over backwards on his trapeze, put their face <laughs> between the, their legs and rest their, their chin on the trapeze bar. Sure, it's not hard to get into at all. <laughs> But let's talk about that because contortion obviously does come easy to you. I just um, advertised you as being someone who literally folds herself in half. What do you attribute your phenomenal flexibility to? Oh, that's definitely to Rosa. <laughs> Our contortion teacher, Rosa Agonsetze. Mm -hmm. she, she does have a way of bending people in half, doesn't she? Yes. <laughs> um, and what's also interesting, many contortionists are generally flyers. Like in Partner Acro, we throw you around. But you keep asking to be the base. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like flying. <laughs> and, 
and you've actually people might look at you and not consider you very strong, but you are both flexible and quite strong and have started basing before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And you're also known uh, by the other kids in the arches as one of the best spotters. You have caught many a person as they were flying through the air. <laughs> yeah, I love catching people because I hate when they fall. <laughs> it's important to be responsible in the search. Mm -hmm. um, so what we've done, you've been to New York City when we went to film Wonderama. Uh, you were also with us when we did our first PC Pyramids partnership in Puerto Rico. Do you want to talk about what that was like for you? Oh, that was so much fun. I don't know where to begin. I mean, it was so fun learning the Puerto Rican culture. And I always say that- so When we left to go there, was that your first plane trip? No, the trip to New Jersey was the first plane trip. Right. And it, but it was your first time seeing the ocean. Yes. That, and, that was so fun. <laughs> but I think- talked about the culture of Puerto Rico because we were totally immersed in it. Yeah, I learned so much. Well, I didn't learn Spanish, but I learned how to understand it more in those two weeks than I did in two years of Spanish class in high school. And it's just being in that environment was really fun and really cool. And the kids from the Puerto Rican troupe were just amazing. Um, Ilka is my twin, and we just clicked automatically. And it's like she could speak Spanish, she could speak English, but I, I just love the Puerto Rican culture so much. And it was just so cool to have somebody from a whole different culture be like a best friend to me. Do you remember the very first, it was our first day there and we were training and then you guys went in for lunch. And I don't know, I was still doing Sing in the Tent and I came in and instead of doing lunch, you were all dancing. Yeah, that's because somebody said, cause we wanted to go in the pool so bad. And somebody said, you can't go into the pool until you dance with us. And we are like, okay, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> and everybody was saucing, it was fabulous. And then we ended up putting that in the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when when we started doing our partnership with uh, National Circus School of Puerto Rico, our music changed, and we had a lot of great Puerto Rican music. And then they came here, and we did the tour here. Mm -hmm. And then this summer, we were supposed to go to Puerto Rico. <laughs> there we are, and working working at home. Um, so, how are you keeping in shape? during the pandemic, since you can't do some of the, thing, the things that we were doing at City Museum all the time? I think the biggest contributor is doing um, the Zoom classes, the Arches class and the, and the Chiron's handstand class. And the, the people who Chiron is, they might've seen him because he was a guest on this show. So Chiron, should I explain it from my perspective or? Oh, yes, please. I'd love okay. to <laughs> my perspective, he was one of the first archers who coached me when I was in level two, and I hated him. <laughs> Absolutely hated him because he was not necessarily mean, but he was not putting up with like me not wanting to do something. He wasn't putting up with a trick not working. He was going to make it work. And from that day forward, he has taught me so much. And he's been like a huge role model to me and even a great friend, like outside of circus, we've hung out with other friends and it was so fun. But yeah, Karen's just an amazing performer, amazing coach, and he's like talented. <laughs> Very talented and people can see him also in our Balancing Act show, which is on our YouTube channel. Kyron was a student of ours from elementary school till, he, till graduation and now he's in circus college at a Col Nacional de Cirque, but because our classes are on Zoom, he's coaching. So he's coaching a weekly class with the Arches. And yeah, I think people are learning a lot. In fact, if they follow us on Facebook, I, I put that last exercise, that final countdown exercise that's posted <laughs> on Facebook on this past Sunday. But speaking of coaching, that's what we do at Circus Harmony. We build we build pyramids out of people and we build character in individuals. And one of the ways we do it is by training them to be leaders through coaching. And I wanna say that you are one of the best student coaches we've ever had. And the way you looked up to Kyron, there are so many young people who look up to you. Thanks. And whatever you do, if you ever wanna be a teacher, 
I, you will be an amazing, amazing teacher. You really have a way of, of connecting with your students. And I think they feel that how much you care. Miss Maple is just really anxious here. You will have your moment. Do you want to see Sabrina? You miss Sabrina? There she is. <laughs> yeah, Miss Maple is going to try a new trick. I, I don't know if you saw the show last week. She knows her new trick, but she didn't do it. So we're going to give her another chance because that's what the circus is about. You do something, you fail, and you try again. What, what are some of your favorite failure memories that became successes? Oh gosh, there's, I wouldn't say there's so many, but there's some pretty big ones that are great. Right. Think... The failures that are the most interesting part of the training process, really. Oh, I, I thought of one. Okay. <laughs> okay, we've done Foxing Talent for three years. Our second year, it was our, it was our first round, first round out of three. And Jay and I, we came down from the Lyra. <laughs> oh, I remember this. And we went to do aerials, but we were too close. An aerial is a no hands cartwheel. You have to remember, not everybody knows. And you were on the opposite <laughs> ends of the stage and you went to do aerials past each other and? And we hit each other's feet and? Upside down midair. No hands on the floor. <laughs> and Jay, she just kind of twisted out of it because she was farther along in her aerial, but I fell like straight on my face <laughs> and I had a huge swollen ankle and that was, that was great. <laughs> you stood up in style. Mm -hmm. And yep. I think that was part of what got you to the next round. Yeah. Because that's <laughs> also part of circus is things are going to happen and you keep going. You find a way to, to keep going. Yeah. Like, like in the pandemic, perseverance through pandemic. That's our hashtag. Yeah. I, uh, I remember that. I also remember that the first class I met you in was at um, Ames Elementary School in St. Louis's North Side, and you took class there, and you really stood out. And then I don't know, we kind of lost you. And then we did a class with Grand Center Arts Academy, and you came with them. I didn't come with Grand Center. You didn't? You, I think it was. And I, why do I think you were there? You were at that school. Yeah, I was at that school. That was the year the second year I had started coming back because I kind of skipped the first year after Ames yeah. because I didn't exactly have it put in my schedule at that point. But once I got circus rolling, it was pretty good. Right. And you were there, like you said, four and five days a week performing multiple acts. And now here we are. But I do want to show people the act that you and Jayla put together for the balancing act. For people who don't know, the Balancing Act, Walking the Pandemic Tightwire, was a show created by our students from their bedrooms, their backyards, their living rooms, uh, public parks, because we were so focused on creating shows, and this was the pandemic perspective. So it was also the first time that you guys really talked about your feelings in a show. Um, and I should point out in this show, even though it was shot during the pandemic, you and Jayla are touching each other. For the most part, all of our classes are in, on Zoom. The classes that we do in person are masked and socially distanced, but you had permission from your parents um, to get together to, to redo this act. So we shot it outside. Uh, we just did it once and you hadn't been working since March. And this was in September, August or September that we shot it. Um, and my problem now is going to be that I had all these tabs pulled up and I'm gonna to have to find it and find the show and, and go to it. But is there anything else you wanna share with people about your journey and, and how circus has impacted your life and maybe changed your perspective on, on life? Hmm. I always say I don't know what I would do without circus because through circus I've gotten to travel a lot I've gotten to come out of my shell because I was I was a very shy person. Um, I've gotten to do that now. <laughs> um, what else? I don't. Circus has always just been the star, like the key in my life. Like I've always gone back to circus, especially when I moved to Jefferson County. 
it was one thing that held me together, not only circus itself, but the friends I had at circus and just the connection, because when you move from the city to all the way out here, it's completely different culture, different lifestyle, different, different everything. But circus right. is one thing that kept me like straight. The other thing is that you don't have a cell phone. No, but I'm getting one. Oh, this is news. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest news of uh, circus comedy. And now, but what I found out, you are also, besides being famous for being such a great teacher and, and a fabulous contortionist, you are known for these incredible letters that you write to people, inspirational letters. I personally have several of the letters you wrote for me hanging in different parts of my house. And when I feel down, they're what sets me straight and reminds me of why I do what I do as the artistic executive director of Circus Harmony. But my understanding is that since you didn't have a computer, you've actually been snail mail writing letters to people, yeah. like in envelopes with stamps to communicate <laughs> in the pandemic, which I think that's amazing. <laughs> Thanks. I've been, I've switched to emailing recently. And since um, Karen and Oliver's birthdays are coming up, this weekend and next week. I'll be emailing them because I'm not sending a letter all the way to Canada, but. Well, I thought all of your letters, however you deliver them, are <laughs> exceptional. And Oliver is Kyron's partner. He's also up in Canada at circus school. Um, so you're a junior now? Senior. senior. You're a senior now. I knew that. <laughs> um, have you decided if you're gonna try also audition for circus college or what you're gonna do yet? It's getting to where you need to like be thinking about it. Yeah, I think I've gone more down the route of psychology. And that's another thing circus has taught me is people skills. I love people and seeing where people come from, what they do and what their environment causes them to act or how they react to things. And so I decided psychology because, yeah. There's some interesting, there's a, a website called Yes and Brain. Um, I will send it to you, but it's somebody, Lacey Alana, who does like circus psychology. And there's also Carrie Heller from the Circus Arts Institute in, in Atlanta, Georgia. And she does therapy. She does counseling through circus arts. Like literally by, if, if you're a family, you are more likely to talk to each other if you're doing circus together than if you're on opposite ends of the couch. And you know from doing circus yourself, you find out a lot more about your strength and your resilience by literally doing circus. And psychology, clearly you have a way of connecting with people. I think that's really exciting. And thank you for being a guest on Up in the Air. I will see you at five o'clock where we're working on an act for the new partnership that we're doing with Circus Circuli in Stuttgart, Germany. So thanks. Uh, I am now going to try and find the balancing act. It could take a moment. Any any parting circus words of wisdom? Of wisdom? I don't know if there's any words of wisdom for me, but I don't know. Keep going. So if you can't find anything to find happiness, then a circus class can definitely do it. Just not just the training, but also the classes, the people, and the coaches. It's a fun right. environment. Even online. I think um, we're finding a way to connect online. And I think that's what we did in the balancing act. So thank you very much, Sabrina. And I'll see you in a little while. And hopefully I'll be able to, oh my goodness. Hopefully I'll be able to find this. Uh, bye. Bye. Wish me luck finding the balancing act. Okay, so part of my problem is that it's blocking it on this page. Thank you for your patience, people out in Facebook land. Here we go. And there we go again. It just went right to the end. So sorry. It seemed like it was working. At the beginning of 2020, I had such high hopes for the year. I was like, I'm finally a senior, this is going to be my year, it's going to be awesome, you know, all that good stuff. But then the pandemic happened. I didn't lose hope that quickly. I knew that it was really bad, but I would still say, well, it can only get better from here, right? But I found as I 
kept saying that it keeps finding ways to become words. And normally I would say I'm being dramatic because nine times out of 10, I am. But this is one of the first times that I can say I'm really not. I don't have a phone, which means I don't have social media. So I can't see what other people I know or what my friends may be doing in their quarantine. But it also means I don't have to see the craziness and the drama and the politics of what's going on out in the real world. My mom said, hey, you can text or call your friends on my phone. And so I thought about that and I thought on it some more, but I could never get myself to go call my friends. To me, it would hurt more to talk to them and hear their voice. And once I hung up the phone, know that I was still in my room. I was still in my bubble. And I still had no idea of when the next time would be when I could see my friends, when I could laugh with them, and I could hug them. And so I didn't call them. I'm used to being lost and not having everything figured out like most 17-year-olds. But to see the people who normally have their heads glued on straight and the people that I look up to for guidance to be lost as well was really scary. Everyone has been affected by this. And problems that you once looked at as small have more weight to them now when they're on top of everything else going on. I wasn't able to be there for you during the racial pandemic. Not many people know how much um, oppression is on the Black community. I myself don't know that much, but I know from what you have told me and what you have said you have experienced that it's a lie and people just don't see it. And so when the George Floyd incident happened, you know, the protests went up, out and crazy, people were actually seeing it. And I just knew that you and other, like, some of my other Black friends were going through it and I couldn't be there for you. I couldn't, like, physically be there to help in your fight against racial injustice because I had to stay home because of the pandemic. And so it was really hard for us to not be able to talk to each other or see each other or support each other in a type of way. Being adopted and having such a large family means that there are many different views and different upbringings and different races and different experiences. And we had our different opinions on the Black Lives Matter movement. So while I was protesting and posting different things on social media, um, we had many tough conversations and there were things said that completely changed the way that I look at some of my family members, but I feel like they were things that needed to be said and conversations that needed to be had in order to move forward and in order to educate. I remember Jay and I were always laughing together we were always smiling we were always having so much fun in our own world i know you always be together and keep fighting for each other no matter the distance or crazy events happening in our life and that was Sabrina and Jayla's Double Lira Act from the Balancing Act. You can find that on our YouTube page, the whole show. Uh, you can also sign up for classes. We are doing private aerial classes at City Museum or semi-private if you have a friend, mask, socially distanced. And we're offering our micro camps, the week of Thanksgiving micro camps in our circus ring. Other than that, we have Zoom classes and shows come to you right now. As promised, Maple is going to maybe do her new trick. So we go to the awkward moment where we move the computer down to Maple level. See, there's Maple level. Maple, Maple. Maple has a new prop. She has this giant tortilla blanket. And now, Maple is going to attempt now to become a canine burrito. Actually, that's how it's scary. Down, Maple. So she has the down part. Now she has to actually pick up the blanket and then roll over and wrap herself in a burrito. Okay, burrito, burrito. 
Oh, that's pink. Well, now she's pink in it, so you have to be down and take it. Thank you. Well, that's the rolling over part. So this has three parts down, take it, and then roll over. So, Maple, if you could please take it. No? So, as you saw, if you were tuned in last week when we had to show it on video, because also last week she didn't do those things. But we are not going to give up. Well, we will today in a little while, but you have another chance. Maple, take it. Pick it up. Pick it up. Good girl. Pick it up. Good girl. Pick it up, burrito. Yes! Yes! Well, she rolled over, but it didn't roll over her, and that's not her fault. So we're going to count that as a semi. You want to try it one more time. Don't say no. Down. That was pretty good. That was pretty good for a canine burrito. Down. Down, please. Yeah. And take it. Take it. Maple, take it. Take it. Good girl. And burrito. Yes! She did it. Give it up for Maple, the canine burrito. Yay! Okay, Maple, can you do one last thing? Well, not exactly. Can you get the coffee? Can you bring me the coffee? Go get the coffee. Get the coffee. Get the coffee. It's in the house. And can you bring me the coffee? So we do have fresh roasted Defy Gravity Coffee, just roasted, just picked up. And you can order it online. There's details at circusharmony.org and also in the description of this live stream. And now, Maple, go to the circuit. Go to the circuit because it's time for your semi famous leap through the hoop of fake coffee. Oh, more coffee. We have a lot of coffee. You should order some. And now, your semi famous leap through the hoop of fake fire. Hop. Maple, hop. Maple, hop. Maple, hop. So if you buy our Defy Gravity Coffee, it supports our Flying Children's Scholarship Fund. Gives you a lift, helps a child fly, all in one cup. Meanwhile, Maple will go back to sheltering in place. She was a fabulous little canine burrito. It just took her time because these things take time. And that's why we say keep persevering, persevere through the pandemic, go boat. You have one week, go boat. Uh, tune in next week at four o'clock on City Museum's Facebook page for this Up in the Air live stream. Meanwhile, don't forget to sign up for classes, order coffee. And here's another special announcement. The week of December 13th, we are partnering with STL Barkeep. They have a silver lining service where they bring cocktails to you. There will be special circus cocktails that you can order the week of December 13th, and they keep in your refrigerator for up to three weeks. So you can order enough for, for the holidays, for New Year's, and a percentage of the sales will go to support Circus Harmony. So you can drink coffee, you can drink spirits, you can lift your own spirits by lifting yourself and taking a circus class. Meanwhile, thanks for tuning in. I'm Jessica, the Circus Lady. That's the marvelous Miss Maple. And thanks for letting us make your day a circus day. I always say that and I never am ready to turn this off. And then I have this awkward moment where I say, really, I mean it. Thank you. <laughs>